Welcome to Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. I'm Steve Remmert. And I'm Odile Remmert. Get ready for a podcast that challenges everything you thought you knew. We're the founders of the Remmert Method, ready to shake up your mindset. Break through doubts, fears, and limiting beliefs and ignite your true potential. Join us for inspiring conversations and strategies you won't hear anywhere else. This is Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. Subscribe now and get ready to redefine what's possible. This won't be a long one. I wanted to just address the topic of self-care versus selfishness. And I know this is something that a lot of people kind of intellectually know, big focus on self-care recently, and the fact that it's important to take care of yourself so that you're in a position to help others and take care of others. And I know a lot of people use the analogy of the thing of being on an airplane and the advice of putting the mask over your own face first so that you're then able to help others. And that's all great, but I wanted to add the neuroscience to this. And here it is. (laughs) So first of all, the top priority of the human brain is, of course, immediate survival. As far as the unconscious part of the brain goes, nothing overrides immediate survival. And of course, that makes sense because if if you don't survive, nothing else matters, of course. So our brains are designed to prioritize surviving in this moment. And the mechanism for that is the stress chemicals that are pumped into our system, stress chemicals including adrenaline and cortisol, one of the effects they have on the brain and body is narrowing our focus to the apparent perceived present danger. And when it's working adaptively the way it's meant to work, then there's a wild animal about to attack us and our focus goes immediately onto that and we're not distracted by anything else so that we have the best chance of surviving that encounter. The problem comes when we are not in immediate danger, but the brain, the unconscious part of the brain doesn't know the difference between something we're worried about, something we're feeling frightened about that doesn't involve survival, but it may be we're worried about what someone will think of us, or we're worried about paying our bills, or anything else that we feel anxious about, worried about, when we get angry, when we get frustrated, when we feel hopeless, all negative emotions involve the same stress chemicals that are produced when our lives are in immediate danger. What happens is when we're feeling negative emotions, those stress chemicals are in our system and the brain is fully focusing on the so-called present danger, even though it's not actually physical danger. And the reason that happens is because the unconscious part of the brain can't tell the difference and can't judge something as unrealistic and can't use reason or logic. So while the conscious mind knows I'm not in immediate physical danger, I'm just worried about the way this person is going to react when I have to speak to them. But the unconscious part of the brain doesn't know that. It's just the stress chemicals are producing that physical reaction. And of course, as we teach, part of that reaction is blood drains from the prefrontal cortex of the brain to the back of the brain. And the prefrontal cortex is where we do our cognitive thinking. So for strategizing, problem solving, and all those things. Now, how does this relate to self-care and selfishness? Well, because the top priority is immediate survival, and whenever we're feeling any kind of negative emotion, the brain and body are in that survival state. When we are in that state, thinking of others is not a natural automatic thing. It's the brain is focusing on the so-called present danger. However, right after immediate physical survival, the second priority is others, is connection, is altruism, is generosity, is compassion, is that sense of being able to help others. And of course, part of that is because as humans, we're not designed to survive on our own. It's very important for us to collaborate and to be accepted by the tribe and to give and receive from others. So our brains are designed that way as well. So as long as we have the sense of I'm safe inside us, it's automatic and unconscious to reach out and help others. Now, part of the survival state is 
you may know of people who are wealthy, they're, uh, they've got great lives, they're successful, they've got lots of people who love them. So you would think they would be generous and kind and compassionate, but they're not. They're still perhaps mean to people or they're still very not generous. They're not helpful. They seem very selfish. Now, the reason for that is because although the outside all seems great and I'm thinking, I wish I had their life, inside them, there will still be fear, frustration, I'm not good enough, whatever that is, even if it's just unconscious. So even though their lives appear to be wonderful, the unconscious part of their brain is still producing those stress chemicals. So they're still feeling, they're still in that survival state within them, even though it may not show on the outside. And I'm sure you can think of at least a few well-known people, celebrities whose lives seemed amazing who were suffering from depression, who were looking for a way out, who were suffering in other ways, even though it wasn't showing on the outside. And in the same way, you may look at other people who are not financially well off or who have gone through a lot of pain, suffering, but who are still kind, compassionate, generous, and helpful to others. And the reason for that is, again, despite the outside circumstances and the impression inside them, they've got a sense of safety and being loved. And that is part of their self-image. So the difference between those two types of people is their self-image. On one hand, you've got a self-image of I'm not safe regardless of what they're seeing, of what they're experiencing on the outside. And on the other hand, you've got a self-image of I am safe and loved. And again, this is unconscious, so they may not be aware of it. So prioritizing self-care means doing whatever it takes to feel good inside you, to put yourself first in order to be able to create that state within your brain and body that you are safe and loved, and then you will automatically be able to help others and be generous and be kind and compassionate because you won't be in that state of survival. If you'd like to find out more about changing your self-image so that you are able to create those references in the unconscious part of your brain that prove that you're safe and loved, so that then the rest is automatic, including success and health and everything else. We have a free masterclass, that does a deep dive into all of that, how self-image is created, and most importantly, of course, how you can change those references that form your self-image and worldview so that they match whatever it is you want to achieve in your life. The link is in the description. Go ahead and register for that. And I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for tuning in to Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. We hope you found this episode enlightening, inspiring, and helpful. And if you did, please do consider leaving us a five-star review so that others can benefit as well. Subscribe for more inspiration and strategies to fuel your success. For more information on working with us, visit our website, theremertmethod.com. That's Remert, R-E-M-M-E-R-T, theremertmethod.com. Sending you love and encouragement. Until next time.